and John stratified men into three cadres children young men and elders they say children are those who exist within the ambience of the benevolence of God and so when you find a child all he's concerned about are the things God gives he just enjoys God my son will wake up sometimes and then if nobody is around he will shout when you come he will look at you he's waiting for you to smile for him to be happy and so because he's a child you have no choice but to smile because if you don't smile he may trouble you for a little while he's a child he doesn't care even when he's wrong he will cry he will ease on himself and cry you will quickly come and say sorry sorry and clean him up if he's 12 years old and he does that we will welcome him with there's something they call koboko in africa koboko it has many mouths so that when you weep you will weep once but the stroke will be three i don't know about uk because in the angelic ranking in all of creation only man could reveal the dimensions of god and lucifer had perceived this thing so he wanted to enter into it i will exalt my throne above this <laughs> I was listening to a man and he said the whole book of revelation which is the last book of the bible was not given by the whole, the holy spirit it was given by an angel does that mean god has forgotten that the holy ghost speaks why was it an angel that met paul uh, john in the isle of patmos all of those are statements of immaturity and arrogance so long as you live you will need men that have gone ahead you will need angelic support even jesus needed angelic support and the bible said those of us who are heirs of salvation they are ministering spirit that minister for us and then you will need the holy spirit that angels are at work does not undermine the work of the holy spirit and that men are at work does not mean the work of the holy spirit is undermined the realm of god is the realm of order when you find a man bringing a dimension to you is because the holy spirit allocated that dimension to that man because it's a system it's a structured government where thrones define purposes and essence and so there are certain thrones in men ascend that makes them become custodians of different dimensions of god and they communicate the man ascends a throne and a dimension is wielded to him and he brings the body of christ into that dimension we call such men patriarchs so men are not called patriarchs because they are old men are called patriarchs because they handle dimensions and they constore those dimensions to the body of christ to the advantage of generations after that's why the bible said in romans 15 verse 4 it said the things that were written aforetime it said they were written for our learning so that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope if you study the book of hebrews chapter 11 you will find elders that caught dimensions in god and communicated those dimensions in hebrews 11 from verse 1 the bible said now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen he went further to said to say for by it not the children the elders obtain a good report and i told you there is a difference between a child and an elder if you study first john chapter 2 from verse 12 to verse 14 you will see john by the instrumentality of the spirit of wisdom you know john was a prophetic apostle and so he had access to scrolls in zion such men can give you spiritual stratification and john stratified men into three cadres children young men and elders they say children are those who exist within the ambience of the benevolence of god and so when you find a child all he's concerned about are the things god gives he just enjoys god my son will wake up sometimes and then if nobody is around he will shout when you come he will look at you he's waiting for you to smile for him to be happy and so because he's a child you have no choice but to smile because if you don't smile he may trouble you for a little while he's a child he doesn't care even when he's wrong he will cry 
he will ease on himself and cry. You will quickly come and say, sorry, sorry, and clean him up. If he's 12 years old and he does that, we will welcome him with, there's something they call koboko in Africa. Koboko, it has many mouths. So that when you weep, you will weep once, but the stroke will be three. I don't know about UK, because there they don't flood children, but here, we don't spare the rod. <laughs> because he said, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. He said, but the rod of correction. <laughs> because they have removed the rod of correction from the Western world, foolishness is on the rampage. They don't know the ancient wisdom of scriptures. They said, no, don't flog your children. Ah, children. But when John was talking to us, he made us understand that the first strata you get to in the kingdom is the realm of children. You enjoy the love of the father. That's why he said, your sins are forgiven you for his namesake. You are not even reasonable enough to say sorry. God still forgives you. You are a child. For his namesake, all you need is provided. And then you can stay there all your life and think Christianity begins and ends there. So when you give your testimony, it's always about mundane things. But when elders are talking, you will not be included. Because elders have gone beyond the benevolence of God. In fact, when he went to the realm of young men, he said, I write to you young men because you are strong. He said, because the word of the Lord abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. So young men are warriors. They fight to defend the kingdom. The jealousy of God is their mantle. If they come to a place and there is iniquity, they will not rest. You will find them evangelizing until everybody repents and turns to righteousness. If they come to a place where there is idolatry, every night they are contending in the spirit to bring down the altar. And when you find out the testimony of a young man, it's not a car. The testimony of a young man are the battles of Elohim that he has fought. He can tell you the souls he has won. He can tell you the sick that by the spirit he has healed. He can tell you the shrines that he has borne down. Because he is no longer with God for what God gives. He is with God because of what he can do to contribute to the kingdom. Because he has grown to the realm of responsibility. He is a reasonable man. He knows that the kingdom cannot advance except as he makes his own impute. When you are operating there, you are a young man. But when you graduate a bit further, you become a father. The goal of a father is no longer the exploits of kingdom. When you meet a father, he becomes a custodian. And so when you meet a father sometimes, he's just carrying the fear of the Lord. That's all he's interested in, the fear of the Lord. His life becomes so temperate because he's not concerned about what he can do for God. He becomes concerned about who he is in God. He has grown from impact. He has come to the realm of state. How he can please God. When you meet a father, his goal is the extent to which he can preserve the presence of God. And so a father, you may offend him, he will keep quiet. Not because it's not right, but because he is interested in the body of Christ. And so he will take the blame and just bear the body because there are certain things if he says the presence of God will diffuse so he would rather keep the presence of God than talk and so when you see them you think they are no longer agile you who is a young man you can come to a crusade ground and you start you are looking for a cripple because you want to raise witches <laughs> you are looking for things to alter when you come to the realm of fatherhood you become more interested in the emotions of God what does God feel how does God think you begin to strive to become like God. That's why when he wrote to the fathers, he said, I write unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning. Now, it was from that realm that the elders got to that they began to bring out good report. And so when you study Hebrews chapter 11, they were not writing about young men. They were writing about the elders that obtained the good report. These ones, it was God that approved them. God looked at them and said, you have successfully grown from the realm of enjoying my benevolence. You have successfully grown beyond the realm where you just fight my battles. You have been able to walk with me until you have perfected the dimension. And so you will be named after that dimension. And so when men summon a dimension, they will be talking about you because they will become 
those of your tribe and the first of the elders he mentioned was abel you know i was telling you last week that our journey with god is more important than what god does for us because what god does for us ends with time but our journey with god transit to eternity and even after we are gone our journey with god is a memorial for those that live on the earth even after we are gone that's why in the life of job it looked as if god was not interested in saving job's life however what was happening to job itself was a message to a generation that regardless of what happens to a man god is faithful that man should not change his ground and so when he wrote about abel what he told us the summary of abel was was sacrifice he said by faith abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. now on the strength of abel's sacrifice righteousness was imputed on him so abel actually was the first man that knew the mystery of righteousness without works and abel was the one that taught the body of christ that in order to walk with a spirit what a spirit considers is not a good voice what the spirit considers is not eloquence what the spirit considers is actually the depth of sacrifice that your heart can accommodate and so many times when the spirit wants to take you deeper he allows you to carry out sacrifices god can show up and tell you pray all night for 90 days not because he needs a vigil to appear to you because you can't pay for the appearance of a monarch one that dwells in zion your 90 days prayer can't summon him he's a king you don't summon a king you are giving access to the presence of a king but when god tells you pray for 90 days and after you pray jesus walks into your room you may go and say if you pray in the night for 90 days jesus will appear you don't know what you are saying jesus only asked you to pray for 90 days because he wanted to bring the economy of sacrifice into your soul so that we know that a spirit is pleased only by sacrifice sometimes when god wants to prosper you he say empty your account he's not interested in your money at best your money will be used to advance what the ministry represents as a portion of his kingdom but with or without your money the kingdom will advance but he's testing your heart because your sacrifice in the spirit is an incense and when that incense is sent to heaven it's a sweet smelling savour and so it was abel that taught us that in case you want to have a relationship with the spirit don't do what you did with your wife you may have called your wife and then you said sweet things even the ones you didn't mean <laughs> hello sometimes when you check 40 percent of what men tell women is politics they don't mean it but women innocently they are wired to believe it they just like it they and because the man knows that the woman likes it she comes out she said you are the most elegant woman in the world oh <laughs> sometimes my wife will come out and say my god <laughs> she will start waiting to hear what i want <laughs> when you carry that your earthly and deceptive approach to men to the corridors of spirit your prayer will become an abomination your action will become an abomination because the only way you can please the spirit is through the fragrance of sacrifice and it was abel that pioneered that order and so because of abel every sacrificial thing you carry out today as an act of faith is a testimony to the life of abel after Abel was gone, another man showed up called Noah. And he said, when God spoke, he said, Noah moved with fear. And so Noah also taught us that the way to please a spirit is by trembling at his presence. That's why I began by telling you that a spiritual thing will not appear to you except as you tremble at it. You and I can learn about the, how to pray for the sick. And I will want to go and pray for the sick. I will drink yogurt. When I finish, I will come and say, in the name of Jesus, get out. Nothing will happen. Somebody else wants to pray for the sick and he kneels down. And he says, Father, 
Thank you for your word. I believe it. And as I go out today, I will honor you by praying for the sick. It's not a prayer. But when God sees that person, he knows that he hallows the process. Now, because the person trembles at the word of God and hallows the process, manifestations beyond his faith will be happening. Because he trembles at God. He trembles at the word of God. That act of trembling is what causes spiritual things to appear. Two of us can come to the altar of prayer and then we are praying and we say we want to pray for seven hours and while we are praying you are praying because you have endurance and you are just dancing on the altar playing you will pray for seven hours nothing will happen another person who understand that prayer is a means of interacting with spirit and he comes to the prayer altar with fear and honor in his heart he will not pray for 30 minutes the encounters he will have you may not have it in two years and then you are wondering all of us were praying how come this person's life is changing he's operating by a mystery it's called trembling at the presence of god two people can come to sing one obviously has a better voice but he came on the strength of his gift and the moment he carries the mic he knows he will bamboozle the people with his voice in fact a song that doesn't need to be inverted he will invert it I have a very big God oh, who is always by my side. A very big God oh, by my side, by my side. He will come and say, I have a very big God. Oh. <laughs> when he's singing, the angels will take a stroll. When they will hang around, they will be surveying the environment. They will, when he finishes singing, somebody else will come his voice will be cracked and the moment he stands and say i have a very big god he may even start crying the next time he opens his eyes people are under the power people are weeping not because he sang a different song the fear the honor the honor in his heart has caused spiritual things to begin to appear and so the moment he says that god will begin to magnify his presence the song will become a conduit that activates immortal things from the realm of God. Meanwhile, all of those spiritual technology was revealed to the church by Abel. By Noah, he feared God. Our generation doesn't have the fear of God anymore. People come to give money on the altar because the money is in the, an envelope. They come and, and then they pocket their hands. They gave the biggest. You don't give the best because your money is bigger. You gave the best because of your heart posture. Because where you are going, they don't count currency. They count heart. That's why Jesus said the woman, the widow, gave the best. Too might. She gave the best. So this is why we call these guys patriarchs. We call them patriarchs because of the things they open to the body of Christ. In the angelic ranking, in all of creation, only man could reveal the dimensions of God. And Lucifer had perceived this thing, so he wanted to enter into it. I will exalt my throne above the